Hello friends and welcome to On The Spot Sim. Today we're going to be tackling Yusuko 2019 February Silver. And on this contest we are looking at problem number one, or sleepy cow herding. The problem reads as follows. Farmer John's and cows are always wandering off to the far reaches of the farm. He needs your help herding them back together. The main field on the farm is long and skinny. We can think of it as a number line on which a cow can occupy an integer location. So here's your number line and cows can occupy locations on our number line. The end cows are currently situated at different integer locations and Farmer John wants to move them, uh, wants to move them so they occupy consecutive locations, e.g. positions 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. So you want to move them such that they're all grouped together. Unfortunately, the cows are rather sleepy and Farmer John has trouble getting their attention to make them move. At any point in time, he can only make a cow move if she is an endpoint, either the minimum or maximum position among all the cows. When he moves a cow, he can instruct her to move to any unoccupied integer location as long as in this new location she is no longer an endpoint. Observe that over time, these types of moves tend to push the cows closer and closer together. For example, a legal move would consist of this one moving inside between these two endpoints. However, this cow moving to this location would not be a legal move because of the fact that the rightmost endpoint is continuing to stay as a rightmost endpoint. And again, uh, the, if you look at the last sentence of that paragraph, observe that over time these types of moves tend to push the cloud co cows closer and closer together. You will see that the difference between the largest and the smallest endpoint are gonna be, is going to be decreasing mo monotonically. Please determine the minimum and maximum number of moves possible before the cows become grouped in n consecutive locations. So, let's understand this problem through the sample input and the sample output. If you're looking at the sample input, it tells us that we have three cows, and each of those cows is situated at well, look at each location, at 7, at 4, and at 9. Then, what they want for the output is they first want the, no, the number of moves, the least number of moves it takes to get everybody bunched together, and they also want the most number of moves it takes to get everybody bunched together. So these are it's kind of like two separate problems in the same Yusuko problem. So let's look at the minimum number of moves it takes. For the example given, we can just take the four, move it to position eight, we're done. We've brought everything into seven, eight, nine, which is three consecutive locations. What can we do for the maximum? For the maximum, one possible route is moving the nine to five and moving the four to six. And this would create a consecutive interval among five, six, seven with two legal moves. And this is supposedly the greatest uh, number of moves it will take to bring everybody together, which is two. Now the problem becomes, what is the least number of uh, least number of steps to take and the most number of steps to take? And we'll address them as two separate issues. Let's start off with the most number of steps to take. Given the following number line, it becomes a question of how can we delay this procedure as long as we can? One thing that we have to notice is on our first step, we have to sacrifice one of the outer gaps. By outer gaps, I refer to these two areas. One of our first steps will have to take care of this because the endpoints have to move to somewhere where they weren't an endpoint before thus eliminating one of these gaps. We can be greedy in this manner and make sure that we eliminate the smallest gap out of these two. So we would want to eliminate this because the more the more spaces that the more free space that we eliminate, the longer it'll take for us to actually finish. The the shorter it'll take for us to actually finish. And we want to delay this procedure, so we want to eliminate short gaps first. One cool observation is if we eliminate the short gap by the following method, by moving this cow all the way over here, right next to this endpoint, we can actually proceed with a really cool weave pattern. Once this new thing is over here, 
we can move this one over here. And then we can move this cow over here. And we can continue moving first the rightmost endpoint to the leftmost open gap, and then the leftmost endpoint to the rightmost open gap. If we continue weaving like this, what you'll notice is that every single move, we are only eliminating at most one, get, oh, one space in between because we are making sure that only one free space is being occupied and this free space isn't taking care, isn't, is the farthest leftmost or the farthest rightmost. This means that as long as we continue this weave pattern, once after our first move, the number of moves that it is going to take is the number of free spaces that we have in general. This is a really cool observation because that means that we can actually compute this without, actually, without having to try out any routes. What does this number end up looking like? Well, we first have to uh, take into account how many free spaces we have to start off with. This number is equal to a of n minus 1, which is the rightmost endpoint, minus a of 0. And this will give us the number of free spaces that we have. Now we know that our first move is going to take up one of these gaps. So all, those, all that free space is going to be gone. And uh, we need to look at the minimum one because we want to eliminate as few spaces as we can. If we're looking at the minimum of those two gaps, we're going to notice that this number looks like either the rightmost gap or it's going to be the leftmost gap. If it is either of these gaps, so, so well between looking at both of these gaps, what happens is we find out how much free space that we're forced to eliminate in our first move. Once we eliminate that free space, we subtract that minimum from the total number of free spaces. And we'll notice that that's the number of moves that we have left because all we have to do is literally just keep occupying and continue to occupy, occupy these free spaces. And this should be our answer for the greatest amount. Just a quick thing to notice is that the number of free spaces is actually this number minus n minus two. So hope you make I hope that clarifies a little bit. Now that we've solved this problem for the greatest amount, we need to figure out what is the least number of steps that it'll take to actually finish this. And this is a little more complicated in the fact that it requires a little more casework. Let's do this in blue. So, given the following arrangement, we're trying to find the be the easy the shortest number of steps it takes to get the grouping of these eight points. Note that if we take any window of eight points, for example, these eight points, we can conceive we can conceivably fill up this window with eight points with five steps, considering that there's already three in here. For example, we could move this one into here, this one into here, and then just stack up the rest of them inside this. And ta-da! We have a window, but we filled up the window in five moves. This means that if we can find a window of eight that already has the most, that has a maximal number of points already occupied, it's just going to take us eight minus those number of points to fill it up. For example, if we took this window over here, which has five points inside of it already, all that we have to do is just take three steps to bring all of these guys in.
There is one exception to this rule. That one exception is if we have an interval with n minus one points contiguous with uh, n minus one contiguous points, and the last space is empty. And through simple observation, it can be seen that this will take two steps instead of one step. Okay. So now the problem becomes how can we find this interval? We can notice that any interval that we picked can be characterized by not the actual interval, but the two biggest, uh, the two endpoints on that interval. And by endpoints, I mean the leftmost point that's within this interval and the rightmost point that's, that's within this interval. So instead of actually searching over every single possible interval, because there are going to be 10 to the 9 different uh, x coordinates, what we can do is we can actually iterate over what is the biggest interval, uh, what is the biggest range of cows with a, a start point that's a cow and an end point that's a cow, which is less than, uh, less than or equal to the length that we're looking for, which is in this case 8. So one technique that we can use to do that is called a moving window. If you do not know what a moving window is, I suggest you refer to one of our previous videos, which will also be linked in the description. However, using a moving window technique, we can look over here. If this range is too small, for example, this range might be approximately 3, we remove this and we move the rightmost pointer. If our range is too small again, it's probably 7, then we can again move our rightmost pointer. However, this range is too big now, so what we do is we move our leftmost pointer inward. We continue doing this process across all of the cows to figure out what is the greatest number of cows we can fit in an interval of cows where the start point and end point is a cow each. Once we find that interval, we notice that the number of spaces that are blank in there are the amount of steps that it'll take as we need to move all the cows that are outside the interval into this interval into those blank spot into those blank spaces. This solves the shortest condition as what well. it is shall solves the shortest number of steps it'll take to actually reach a completed state. Combining both of these, combining both of these techniques, we can figure out the first number and the second number and this solves the problem. Thank you for watching, and well, I hope that you like, comment, and subscribe.